welcome to my youtube channel happy new year welcome to 2021 well um this is gonna be a good year with COVID, of course we should learn to believe that things will always work out for our good right even the bible says so things will always work out for our good so for my old subscribers thank you for tuning in for those who are only tuning in for the first time you're welcome this is your girl here rita well this is a platform where we talk all things social issues we discuss different social issues from relationship issues marital issues financial issues we are still going to talk about all those issues different social issues so welcome 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 so um feel free to put in your comments your questions in the comment sections and i will definitely get back to you i'll answer you and for those who have contacted me directly thank you for contacting me thank you for all the questions you've asked me and um i'll always try my level best to answer you so this whole platform came about because of my own personal experiences and also because of my work experience so welcome enjoy this content now for today we are going to look at um emotional abuse this came about because of um someone who dropped me a dm and they were like yo rita so what exactly is emotional abuse or how does emotional abuse look like you know how can i know that i'm being emotionally abused so i thought well let me let me put something together and then let me share with everyone let me share with everybody on my youtube platform because probably maybe there are other people who also have the same question and let's learn from one another so and then the person was like you know physical abuse is quite straightforward you'll be able to tell that maybe this is physical abuse because you are being physically beaten now how does emotional look, abuse look like what is it that you can pick or what is it that you can you know say what is it that can tell you that hey you know, i'm being emotionally abused or i'm or my friend is being emotionally abused what are the signs of emotional abuse so your girl here will give you 10 signs 10 signs of emotional abuse well the first one is that your partner or your spouse treats you like a child yes we should know the difference of treatments yes there are times when we treat other like kids in our relationships and that is fine but the treatment i'm talking about is that they tell you what to wear they tell you who to talk to and who not to talk to just the way you would treat a child they forget that you're an adult you're a grown-up on your own who can make these decisions but they tend to tell you no you can speak to who or you should not speak to who you cannot be friends to who and you cannot be friends to who, who or you cannot visit who, who who's house they forget that you're an individual before you met them they forget that you're a grown-up they forget all these things so that's the first one they treat you like a child and the second thing is that they monitor your whereabouts they would be calling you where are you just a few moments you separate with them where are you who are you with what are you doing they would be intruding in your activities so this is mostly common to guys most guys have complained about this most guys have <laughs> that i have talked with in my sessions um these are husbands or boyfriends they have complained of uh wives girlfriends who tend to zoom in on their whereabouts so again i want us to know that they there is a thin line between these 
uh, signs that I'm talking about. Some of them, they are out of care and concern, but some of them, they are abuse, they are emotional abuse. And you will know that this is emotional abuse when it's constantly happening. You know, you can't go out and have fun or you can't go out even just going town. The person will start calling. Where are you? Okay, who are you with? Okay, give that person the phone so I can talk to them. Just to confirm <laughs> that really you are with that person. So, there is a thin line again. Some people really want to follow up where you are at, what you are doing. Because they are concerned. They are worried, genuinely worried. But some, it's out of control. And they want to isolate you. Right? So, that's the second thing. The third thing is that they belittle your accomplishments. They make what you have achieved seem little. You know, some of them even use words such as, ah, you could have done better. Ah, that is too small. Ah, if it was me, I was going to, you know, do much better than you. So they make your, your accomplishments look small. Whereas you know you yourself that you put in all your effort and this was something probably something you, you thought you could never achieve but because this is an abuser this is an abuser this is emotional abuse this person would make you feel as though whatever efforts you are putting whatever work you are trying to do it's nothing big it's nothing you know anyone can do it well they also again in accomplishment they make it seem as though it was them who made you accomplish that so without them you were never going to achieve that you know they they they, they, they put you in a position to to forget all the efforts that you did yourself and then the, the the glory comes back to them you know so it was me who made it possible for you to you know to to, to buy that car if it was not for me you were not you were never going to buy that car or it was because of me that today you are able to do that. Or, be, you know, fine. Again, I'm going to repeat this. There are genuine people who literally push us to achieve great things. And that we acknowledge for real. Really. Get me right, guys. Get me very well. But there are people who deliberately, intentionally want to walk all over your ac accomplishments. Right. So... The fifth thing that we should also know is that there is name calling. They call you all sorts of names, you know. Relationships should be adult, adult. Ne? You are dealing with an adult, you are also dealing with an adult. So it should be adult, adult thing. But when now there's name calling, you are stupid, you are a loser. You know, they call you even worse names, guys. It shouldn't be like that. Mm -mm. It shouldn't be like that at all. When I'm an adult and I'm with an adult, we should treat each other with respect. No matter how much offense the other person has done, name calling shouldn't be the thing, guys. It does too much damage. Right? So that also is another sign that you are being emotionally abused. When you have disagreements, when you have fights, this person rush to pick any random name and just call you. That's not right. In whatever relationship, that's not right. So there should be mutual respect. People should respect each other. People should love each other. People should... You know, call each other. If it's name calling, it should be pet names. Pet names that are nice. Like baby, like sweetheart. You know, it should be names that build us. That build the two of you. You get what I'm saying? It shouldn't be names that degrade. Come on, it shouldn't be names that degrade the other partner. It shouldn't be names that, you know, that makes you feel like, ah, oh, this relationship. While well, other people are calling them sweetheart, mine is calling me stupid. No, it shouldn't be like that. That is emotional abuse, guys. The other thing we should also take note of is yelling, 
screaming and swearing if this is happening in your relationship you are being emotionally abused if this is happening in your relationship there is definitely emotional abuse in your relationship so fine we do fight in our relationships we do disagree we do have misunderstandings but when it reaches the extent of yelling literally screaming at each other and swearing calling all the <laughs> the names of all the private parts that is not right that is emotional abuse you are being emotionally abused and then the other thing that we should also take note of is using guilt you know abusers have a mind of their own yeah okay we all have our own mind but they have tactics that they learn over time probably because they were abused themselves or because of childhood traumas right so they have developed tactics which they use on people such as using guilt so you find that this person will tell you things like you owe me you know that you owe me you know and when a person tells you that it's like they corner you and then they put you in this uncomfortable situation yes again i'm going to repeat there are genuine situations where we can tell each other yeah you owe me and all that stuff but when you are in in an in an emotional abusive situation this person will make you feel really that you owe them some of them make you even feel that you owe them your life you understand you know because they have made certain things happen for you so they would make you feel that really you owe them big time you know some of them they will even say ah look if it wasn't for me ne? Angie, you, you don't be this so they use guilt they trap you with this guilt thing and it's continuously used against you you'd find yourself in a position where you'd want to cover up or you want to repay them is often because they are continuously telling you you owe them so you'd find yourself in a position where you continuously do stuff for them you know just to you know cover up for that you all mean thing that they use all the time and in the long run you realize that jay i have spent this much on this person and this person is still continuously saying that you owe me i have done this much for this person and this person still continuously say you owe me girl boy you're being played here come on you're being played they use tactics they use crazy things to manipulate our minds all right so the other thing that we should also take note of is that they keep you from socializing so they isolate you you can't go to your friends you can't go out and chill you can't you can't dine out they'll, they'll find whatever excuses that they're going to use to trap you to isolate you to keep you from going out from knowing other people you know they, they, they would make you again feel guilty for having friends and make those friends as if they are not good friends for you because they have bad influence and all that the thing is this a human being is a social being if you look everywhere around this world there's not really a human being that lives alone fine you can live alone in your home but you cannot survive alone i don't know if that makes sense but what i'm trying to say is that we are social beings we have connections we need to mingle we need to socialize we need to have relationships these relationships can be work relationships these relationships can be um yes intimate relationships we can be friends we can be colleagues we, these are all relationships that make us socialize that brings us together as a human race we are not designed to be an 
on an island like this you see you, 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 you there's no one person who's just living on on an island like this and they don't talk to anyone they don't no a human being is designed to mingle is designed in a way that they need to learn from the other person they need to thrive because of the other person we we, we, we are interconnected we are interrelated so if a person isolates you if they keep you from socializing how would you learn other stuff how will you know what's going on how will you you know uh, how will you even know your, your yourself you know because i am because you are you are because i am really we depend on each other as human beings you know yourself much better because of how the environment or how the society impacts you then you know oh so in this type of situation this is me this is how i can handle situations so if you are isolated if you are kept in a cage Jay, that is not good for you. If you are in such a situation with somebody who is isolating you, with somebody who is cutting all social ties for you, my brother, my sister, it ain't worth it. Really, it's not good for you. I recently learned that uh, when we were growing up as children, I learned this from one of my mentors who was telling me, you know that... When we were growing up as children, we were told not to speak to strangers. We were told to stay away from strangers and all that. But as we grow up, we realize that these strangers are actually people who can give us some good connections. These are the people where our money is. These are the people who can teach us things that we don't know. So if we just stick within our small circle, we stick in our small circle, we will just know that which that small circle of friends know. But if we interact with different people, we are also going to learn what they do from that side, what they do in, in, in the other side of town, what the Oshrambos do, what the Kwanyamas do when we interact. So there's really not really much benefit in isolation. They are there. Yes, some benefits are there. But there are more benefits in socializing. It's 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 an it's a world where we need to learn from each other. It's a world where human beings thrive if they depend on each other. Um, yeah. So basically, that's about it. Yeah. And one more thing, they tend to put down your interests. So you probably have interest in singing and they have interest in something else. They would find a way to make your interests or your hobbies look dumb, look stupid, look not worth it. They, they would put them down, you know. They would not even attend to any of your hobbies or any of your interests. They would make it seem as if it's a burden, it's, it's, it's an issue disturbing your relationship, it's not a nice thing, it's, they would make you feel uncomfortable with your own interests. And then the last thing that I can also share is um, they say hateful things in a joking manner, right? This can be a very painful situation but they make it a joke you know and then when you feel bad about it they will say but you also ah you don't like jokes eh you don't have a sense of humor you you are you know you, you should loosen up you know you should have fun a little bit and then you realize that this becomes a pattern they make everything sound like that and that is also not a good thing. Today they make this joke, tomorrow another hateful joke. That is not right. You are being emotionally abused. As well as sarcasm. They make it seem as if it's nothing. And then they tell you, ah, you are too serious, man. Come on, lose an app, you are too serious. But this is a continuous thing that is happening to you. And when you complain about it, they say you're not serious, you, you are too serious, I mean, 
you you are not a fun person you are boring you are what what those type of comments those type of things should indicate to you that you are being emotionally abused because in normal circumstances when a joke that offends you is made and you tell your partner that uh -uh, this was too painful in a healthy relationship your partner should understand and they should probably apologize they should say oh sorry my bad i'm sorry that won't happen again that's how a healthy relationship should be that's how healthy you know relationships should behave when a person expresses or when they share that what you have just done now is too uncomfortable with me i'm not okay the other person should apologize well i am so happy that i shared this with you and i hope i've answered many of your questions so i have come to the end of my <laughs> discussion with you guys or sharing kindly again subscribe like share tell others tell your friends to tell their friends everyone is welcome to my channel guys any we'll see you again tomorrow mwah, mwah.